once allowed by grossly abuse. Our governors have to share police powers with the president as stipulated by the constitution. We do not have a federal government police force. We have the Nigerian police force, which shall be administered, organized, and supervised by the Nigerian police. No, my lord, I want to say something. Huh? I want to say something here. Perhaps it might also enlarge the scope of people who should be invited here for examination. My lord, if we cannot find those who literally murdered Abiola, who are those people who could be said to be the beneficiaries of the death of Abiola? Rogers has linked you with some of the killing city. He never did. He linked you with the attempted murder of Ibru. He did not. My lord, the matters council is leading the evidence in our matters. Is this an adversary proceeding? It's not, my lord, but uh, we can't be talking about oh. Legally Speaking, a program that deals with legal issues and questions we face as citizens of this amazing country, Nigeria. Legally Speaking, join us every Friday from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. for Legally Speaking. We bring you up to date information on topical issues affecting the common Nigeria. From issues on politics, Hello, Nigeria. Sure. Uh, security. Security. security, and every weekday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Rise and Shine Daily, exclusive on Spectrum Television.
thanks for staying tuned. We're moving on to Africa where Ethiopia tomorrow after a shutdown lasting 18 months. The announcement comes a day after an Ethiopian delegation made the first high-level government visit to the rebel-held region since the signing of a peace deal last month. The airline, the biggest courier in Africa, said today that it would operate daily flights from the national capital Addis Ababa to the Tigrayan capital of Mekelle. According to a statement, still in Africa, Tunisian rights groups today accused the electoral authority of threatening press freedom after it sued bloggers and media outlets for alleged violations during a poll on a new constitution. Last week, the Ishia Elections Authority filed 24 legal complaints against media organizations and bloggers in the North African nation, accusing them of insults, attacking the dignity of voters, spreading false news and receiving foreign funds. Meanwhile, the supposed offenses took place ahead of a July vote on a new constitution boosting the powers of the presidential system a year after President Kai Said staged a in South Africa, authorities have updated to 18 the number of victims that resulted from Saturday's gas tanker explosion near Johannesburg. Reports say of the 18 victims announced, half were staff working at Tambo Memorial Hospital, which suffered extensive damages due to the explosion. As a total of 37 people at the hospital also suffered serious burns. South Africa's regional authorities say the gas tanker explosion caused damages within a 500-meter radius. Seas, which can cause fear, anxiety or death. According to the police in a statement, the right of freedom of worship must not violate the rights of others. Critics say the order violates the constitutional right for freedom of religion and it is therefore illegal. Millions of Christians often gather in churches to hear their pastors make proclamations about the new year. The messages often range from optimistic projections to those warning of impending doom. Meanwhile, the police order came into force last year after the public was inundated by predictions of deaths and calamity. Plotting to remove President Adama Barrow from office statement by government spokesman Ibrima Sankare said they were apprehended over the crime. Uh, their arrest followed the earlier interception of a group of soldiers that attempted to stage the mutiny. The officers include a second lieutenant of the Gambian infantry and a captain from the military intelligence and security unit, Guinea, Sudan and Burkina Faso. Meanwhile, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has expressed his confidence in Barbara Manzi, the most senior UN official in Burkina Faso who was ordered to leave the country by the government. Guterres in a statement said he had full confidence in the UN system in Burkina Faso as well as in Manzi's commitment and professionalism, noting that the doctrine of persona non grata does not apply to United Nations officials. Guterres reiterated the country and its people, adding that only the UN Secretary General, as the Chief Administrative Officer of the organization, has the authority to withdraw any United Nations official. According to reports, Burkina Faso's military government, in a statement on Friday, ordered Manzi to leave the country immediately, without giving a reason. When contacted, a government spokesperson did not immediately. On the foreign scene, Ukrainian pre President Volodymyr Zelensky says he is relying on India's help to implement a peace formula during a phone call with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The call comes as New Delhi seeks to boost trade with Moscow after becoming one of the largest purchasers of Russian oil, defying Western sanctions and providing a vital financial lifeline to Russian President Vladimir Putin as the Kremlin wages an unprovoked war against its neighbor. In a statement, immediate succession of hostilities 
and to revert to dialogue and diplomacy. Zelensky presented a 10-point peace formula to world leaders at the Group of 20 summit in Bali, Indonesia, in November. India assumed the G20 presidency this month and will hold it until next year. Ukraine must fulfill Moscow's proposals regarding their new territories or the Russian military would take action, according to the Russian state news agency. The four occupied territories Russia claimed control over the four regions of Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia and Kherson after sham referendums in September widely slammed by Kyiv and Western governments as violating international law. Recall that last week Russian President Vladimir Putin acknowledged that the situation in the four occupied territories was extremely complicated, a rare window into the challenges that Moscow faces in areas it has attempted to illegally and then students line up outside the public library in the Ukrainian town of Ipen, desperate to get plugged in and online amid the latest energy blackout. The library on the ground floor of a nine-story apartment block in the town center of the Kiev suburb has become the locus and a symbol of a tentative recovery following the horrors of Russian occupation. Once inside, Ipen residents jostle for seats in the area newly designated as the town's first free co-working space, sometimes spilling over into the children's books section. Meanwhile, with much of Ipen still in ruins, the library is also functioning as an alternative classroom for displaced school teachers, a makeshift office for psychotherapists, or even a base for the town's St. Nicholas to greet and take pictures with children. President Tsai Ing-wen made this known today as the self-ruled island faces China's military, diplomatic and trade pressure. Taiwan, which split from the mainland in 1949 during a civil war, is claimed by China. The decades-old threat of invasion by China into the self-governed island has sharpened since China cut off communications with the island's government after the 2016 election of Tsai who is a member of the Democratic Progressive Party and seen by Beijing as a pro-independence. Meanwhile, China's People's Liberation Army in particular has stepped up its military harassment of Taiwan, sending fighter planes and Navy vessels toward Taiwan on a near daily basis in recent years. In response, the island Meanwhile, Chinese officials have said China will scrap quarantine for travelers from 8th January, marking the last major shift from the country's zero-COVID policy after almost three years of closed borders. But this will reopen rules with the virus's ferocious spread in the wake of restrictions being lifted. Report says hospitals are overwhelmed and elderly people are dying. The true toll daily case counts and deaths is currently unknown because officials have stopped releasing. However, many have also expressed anger over the sudden freedom after years of control. In the meantime, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida has said Japan will require COVID-19 tests on arrival for travelers from mainland China from Friday. Recall that Tokyo has eased its COVID-19 tests on arrival, other than those who are displaying symptoms. Kishida said the decision was taken because there is information that infection is spreading rapidly in China, which is causing growing concern. There is Blyden, okay. Thank you, Savior Roberts. Good evening. It's another business day, and my name is Blyden Ukem. In the news, we begin with the commodity markets. As copper hits over six months high, world's copper production, followed by China, Peru, United States, Australia, Indonesia, Zambia, Canada, and Poland. The biggest importer of copper are China, 
Japan, India, South Korea, and amid hopes of demand and revival in China after the world's second largest economy announced it would stop requiring inbound travelers to go into quarantine starting from January 8. Elsewhere, prospects of lower copper production in South America continued to drive short with mine protests in Peru, stifling the activity. Commodity trader Trafigura warned that global copper stocks have with current inventories being enough to supply world consumption for just 4.9 days. Finally, mining giant Glencore estimated a supply shortfall of 50 million tons in 2023. So copper is down more than 11% so far policy to cop inflation. In Nigeria, tantalizers are in need of capital as investors snap firm. The board of tantalizers has disclosed that it will be selling a majority stake in the company after holding an extraordinary general meeting. According to a trading document dated December 23, 2022, the company resolved to sell 36% of tantalizers' existing shares and its capital to source funds through equity and other financing options in the future for expansion and date reduction amongst others. The company's share has been trading at 20 cobble since December 2018, from 50 cobble in early February 2018. Demand for the firm's share has been low among stock market investors, causing tantalizers market valuation to fall by 60% to 642.32 million naira from 1.6 billion naira within five years. Still in Nigeria. Anyone? to 73,200 Naira in November 2022. This represents an increase of 97.09% according to the MBS Transport Fair Watch report for November 2022. The report showed that the average price of a single flight ticket increased by 0.09% from 73,100 Naira in October to 73,260 Naira in November 2022. It further disclosed that the states with the highest average prices of airplane tickets on a single journey, and they included Taraba, 77,100 Naira, Delta, 76,500 Naira, as well as Bielsa and Oyo states with 76,100 Naira each. The states with the lowest prices were Niger states at 67,100 Naira, Gombe states, 70,000 Naira and Nasarawa states, 70,100 Naira. This is all on business news. The stock market report returns after the holiday break. In fact, with an avulsion fracture, King say Demantis Sabonis has a avulsion fracture in right thumb. To state this. Day, we we'll bring you up to date information on topical issues affecting the common Nigeria. From issues on politics, Hello, Nigeria. Security. 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 education, health, lifestyle, and so much more. Join Janice Coburn and Uyai Anyakin every weekday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Rise and Shine Daily. Exclusive on Spectrum Television. The Nigerian police, which is the only one allowed by grossly abused. Our governors have the Nigerian police force, which shall be administered, organized, and supervised by the Nigerian police. No, my lord, I want to say something. Huh? I want to say something here. 
perhaps it might also enlarge the scope of people who should be invited here for examination. My Lord, if we cannot find those who literally murdered Abiola, who are those people who could be said to be the beneficiaries of the death of Abiola? Rogers has linked you with some of the killing city. You never is mind. this an adversary proceeding? It's not, my lord, but uh, you can't be talking about cases which are in court, Is my this lord. an adversary proceeding? It's not, my lord. These cases are in court, my lord. I'm just reminding you a lot of My lord, my lord, sorry, my lord. I think I'll be in court again. Legally Speaking, a program that deals with legal issues and questions we face as citizens of this amazing country, Nigeria. Legally Speaking, join us every Friday from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. for Legally Speaking. Speaking. Many thanks for staying tuned. Now in health, President Muhammad Bahari has been commanded over his insistence and prompt release of approvals for massive capital projects at the Federal Medical Center Umahia, the Abia State Capital. The medical director of the FMC Umahia, Professor Azubuike Onyebuchi, handed down this commendation in Umahia during an end of year parley he had with the staff and hence the massive infrastructural development of FMC Umahia and the environment looking clean. The MD also warned frontline staff over their attitude to patients, which he said is becoming too much, advising them to show empathy to patients at all times. Shilling Health, the World Bank has said Nigeria's low level of revenue threatens fiscal sustainability and undermines the federal and state government's ability to finance necessary export released by the World Bank in December. The Global Bank report noted that public spending on education and health prevents Nigeria from developing the human capital needed for large-scale private investments outside the oil sector, adding that Nigeria's revenues are among the lowest globally. Reports say Nigeria's revenues are not only low, but have also followed a worrying declining trend over the past decade. Elsewhere, experts say it has not been possible to begin a trial in Uganda of three experimental Ebola vaccines due to a lack of cases of the virus. An outbreak of the Sudan strain of Ebola has caused at least 55 deaths since September contained the outbreak. It says if no further cases are reported in the next few weeks, it will have to look at other ways to test the safety and effectiveness of the vaccines. Meanwhile, Uganda has received more than 5,000 doses and was planning to vaccinate close contacts of those infected. We head over now to Bry James for trending sports stories. Thank you, Savi Robert. Good evening and welcome to the Sports Desk. I am Bright James. We begin from basketball where Sacramento Kings All-Star Center Domantas Sabonis has been diagnosed with an avulsion fracture of the owner collateral league. Tonight's home game against the Devon Nuggets indicating he may try to play through the injury. Sabonis sustained the injury to his non-shooting hand in the fourth quarter of Sacramento's 125-111 loss to the Washington Wizards on Friday. He's been a driving force in the Kings' renaissance this season, averaging 17.9 points, leading a league 12.4 rebounds and 6.76 for the current number 60 in the Western Conference. Sabonis, an all-star in 2020 and 2021 with Indiana, was traded by the Pacers to the Kings last Friday. Been sacked by Norwich City after their 2 1 loss at 10 man Luton Town. On Boxing Day, left the East Anglia Club fifth in the championship to a point of the automatic promotion sport. Assistant manager Craig Shakespeare and first team coach Liam Bramley have also left Carroll Road. Head of development Steve Weaver and set piece coach Alan Rosser have taken Ketika charge of the team. Norwich has defeated Kenny Worth Road, courtesy of Leeton substitute Carly Wardrow's 90 minute strike 
was the club's second in success central defender Benoit Mandeshelli for a fee of around £35 million. The 21-year-old has won two full Caps of France. Former sports head of recruitment Paul Michel, the sporting director at Monaco, were open to a sale. The 6 feet 4 inches France international left-sided centre-back has always wanted to play for a Premier League club, contending for the championship with West Ham. And Sevilla reportedly having previously been interested, closed doors friendly against Bradford. And that's all we have for you from the sports desk this evening. I am Bright. James, thanks for your time. Hey, thanks, Bright. And now on our entertainment news, famous Nigerian Afrobeats musician David Adeleke, professionally known by his stage name Davido, has unfollowed actress Inyola Badmus prior to his son's death in October. The duo had been best of friends over the years. It now seems like the once envied friendship between the singer and the actress has come to an abrupt end as he unfollowed her on Instagram. Recall that Inyola Batmus made headlines for announcing Ifanya Deleke's death and reportedly exploiting the toddler's death for monetary gains. After a check conducted on Davido's Instagram page, it was noticed that he unfollowed his former best friend in Nyola Batmus. However, in Nyola Batmus is yet to reciprocate as she is still following the veto at the time of this report. And still on entertainment news, Nollywood actress Omoumi Dada is engaged. The actress appears to be ending the year on a high note as she revealed where she revealed that she unboxed an engagement ring. The identity of the actress's man is unknown for now, as many industry colleagues have taken the time to share their congratulations, wishing her well. And lastly, on Entertainment Today, Kim Kardashian is speaking out for the first time since her divorce from Kanye West became finalized last month. In a recently released interview, Kardashian described her how Hart specifically addressed Ye's recent anti-Semitic comments and controversies. Kardashian said she shields their children as best as possible from media coverage, noting that their kids are not aware of West's recent behavior because she limits their access to television, social media, and speaks to their teachers. that's all we have for you at this time. Do ensure to follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel, all of which you can find on our website, spectrumtv.ng. You have been watching Spectrum News at 9. My name is Saviour Robert, wishing you a terrific night rest. Compliment of the season. Bye-bye for now.